Okay, uh, welcome to this video about extracting data from file. Huh? Didn't I do this last video? Ah, no, we were doing the processing data. So this one is about extracting data. Um, so we talked about how different types of data can be extracted from file. Um, basically, we can have like a clean data like the CSV files or nicely formatted text files, but not necessarily it's going to be like that for all the data that we use. So uh, in this one, what we're going to do is have a look at uh, extracting data from uh, an unsorted um, data structure. All right. So real data files usually have a lot of like uh, ext extraneous information. For example, it will contain like the headers, footers, uh, some irrelevant data that you might not need uh, in data processing and etc. So for example, we'll have a look at our next slide, but you can also get uh, the, the result occurring from uh, rainfall data at Perth uh, from this website here. Okay. And basically, what we need to do is uh, use an algorithm uh, that's going to extract just the required data for data processing for us. So, for example, out of all the um, informations, what we are particularly interested in would be the month, day, uh, not sunshine, but the rainfall, and so forth. I need to fix that. Okay, uh, fixed it. Uh -huh. um, so, when we uh, get the query uh, from the website. Uh, basically, they provide a file for you to download. Um, then it kind of looks like this. So you have some heading file as suspected. It's going to have some uh, information about what this data structure looks like. And then it's going to have uh, information about its headers, the actual data. Uh, there's going to be quite a lot of lines and some footer information. So if we quickly look at exactly what that looks like um, in the format here, open, uh, it's the rainfall data. Okay, so this is the rainfall data that is available to you uh, as well. So it's exactly the same one. Um, then it's gonna have like a bunch of lines for the data entry. Um, actually, there's quite a lot of lines, uh, nearly 10,000 lines um, of data um, that we need to handle, right? So obviously this is not feasible to do it by hand and uh, therefore we want to use some program to automate this process. And out of all this information, what we really want is uh, the data right here inside in the middle about the month, the day, and the rainfall data. Okay. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's create some algorithm that can capture uh, the required information and extract it out from the file. So one of the possibility is because we know that uh, there's a bunch of headers that we don't really need. We can probably find uh, some matching line. For example, uh, find this product code, uh, comma. Okay, so we do have product code colon, but that's not what we want to match. We want to match all the way until uh, this line before we start getting the data. So product code comma is something that we can read read one more line to start reading the file uh, actual data and then uh, while we have a bunch of lines uh, so not empty is going to take us to the bottom uh, and oop, so long uh, here the line is going to be empty um, so we're going to read until this point what we do is date is going to be at location two to five. So if we split the lines by separating the comma, that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, then we can extract this data. OK. 
Okay, and to get the and the fifth data is going to be the rainfall. So two to five is zero one. Uh, two three four. Two three four is our date. So the year, month, and date. Uh, and the fifth one is the rainfall data. So that we can collect it like this. Uh, and there are sometimes uh, the rainfall measurements like this here is missing. So we want to filter that out as well. So as long as this one is not empty, that means we have a measurement that we can try to convert that into a rainfall measurement and then uh, do something with it, right? So maybe it's writing to another file or you have some other uh, variables to collect, calculate the average, max, min, etc. Okay. So the question here is, uh, what happens if the data file does not contain the expected heading product code? Uh, also the comma here. Well, that's going to uh, make it really interesting, right? Um, anyway, we'll progress on and then visit that question again. So the previous pseudocode, this one, uh, is going to be converted into Python code like this. Okay. So this is uh, writing out straight into uh, the program. However, if you want, we can create a function that handles some repeated um, processing like over here. And then we can probably chuck in some other stuff into the main. Okay, so go back to our example. We can close our bubble stuff. Okay, so here's the rainfall. So that's the, the left-hand side example, and we can run this. Uh, it's doing exactly the same thing as we described, so it's going to search uh, product code in the line, otherwise until we're going to keep reading the line, and then we read an extra line to skip our heading, and then we process it. So 2 to 5 is the date, um, year, month, day, I can split it as well, and uh, the fifth data is going to be the rainfall. Okay. And for this purpose, I'm just going to echo back what the year, month, day, and the sunshine was. So run this. And as you expect, it's going to print it out for me. Uh, probably have some uh, out here. Mm. Probably have some funny line at the end, but uh, it does gather uh, all the items that we were expecting. Uh, before so and every now and then you'll see like this yeah date was 18 skipped 19 it probably means it didn't have any reading so that's why it skipped and essentially it collected all of that so this means I can now store this value uh, to say some variables and do further data processing on it okay and similarly we can use uh, the other one I think I'm printing here. Okay, so we get exactly the same result as before. Okay, not that one. Okay, so as we can see, uh, we can extract uh, only the requirement data uh, from the file. So let's have a look at uh, some other ways of doing the same thing. So an alternative option is get a list of all lines in file. So before what we were doing is we were reading line at a time. So read line instead of read lines. So this way we don't have to overload our memory space. But here what we want to do is read all the lines in file and make a list of all those lines beginning with IDC JAC0009. Okay, so if we look at our rainfall data again, so this is um, all the readings actually start with um, these values. So if the line starts with this ID number, uh, well, the product code, then I don't have to uh, worry about um, other lines. So get all of these, and for each of those lines, uh, we can process exactly the same as we before okay so in a way this is uh, simpler i suppose but this will only work for this particular uh, base station so this particular product uh, with the specific code and also it cannot handle huge files why why do you think it's that yep 
because as I mentioned before, you have to chuck every uh, all the data onto the memory space for it to be processed. Okay, so if we have more lines, uh, then this is obviously going to give us a problem. Okay, so instead we can make a slight improvement on uh, in terms of code reusability uh, is to get the station name uh, from line three. Okay, or the product code. So. Uh, actually product uh, line 5 in this instance. So here, after the product code, code column, uh, it gives us uh, the uh, what the product code is. So what we can do is product name is at the start of line 5, um, and then we can split it uh, and get this item. So if we split by, say, space, uh, then this is going to be at index 2, for example. Then we can save that. And for all the lines that matches uh, this product code, we can save those lines and then process. So this is now okay for any product. However, it still cannot uh, handle huge files. So what does it look like uh, when we convert it into a code? Uh, it looks like this. Okay, um, let me just comment this out. So that code here is this code here. So we open it, uh, we read everything, and what we need to do is find the product name, uh, which is located on the fifth line. So again, this is a little bit hacking, so rather I should be reading line at a time to see if it matches the product code column, and then we split it and get the second item. Uh, and once this happens, then we can start reading through uh, each one. So if I run this code now, uh, then we're going to have the same output of reading all the items because this reading part is exactly the same. Okay. So that was um, having a, another go at trying to extract relevant data for us. right? So which algorithm should we use to extract data from such unstructured data? Um, uh, data. Well, these are just two algorithms that we have seen and obviously um, you can probably find more other ways of doing this. Well, how can you say which one's better? Yeah, if you have guessed it, that's right. Actually, they're both pretty bad. <laughs> Why? Because there's a lot of estimating uh, roughly whereabouts uh, some parts of the code is using the keywords and really hacking into it. So if, if you see a lot of um, uh, hard-coded values like these, then it's probably not a good idea um, and end up not being uh, very uh, reusable for other contexts. So that's not very good. And they both fail if the file format is changed significantly. So for example, uh, the way these uh, details are laid out, maybe some other places. If the columns change, it's going to affect significantly. If, um, say, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology station number changed uh, with more digits, then again, it may affect how the code behaves and so forth, right? Basically, the problem is that we have inferred the data uh, format from uh, the data. Okay, so what it means is we, obs we looked at the data uh, structure and tried to extract how the information uh, is located uh, from there. But what we really want is uh, uh, some sort of a specification of the data format from the supplier so that we have some standard that we can follow and uh, that acts as a contract ensuring uh, our program continues to work in the future. So. Essentially, what we want to do is some collaboration between both as a programmer, but also the data supplier, so that um, we know that the structure of the data we receive uh, conforms with the structure specified by how they're going to be laid out. So that's the best case we could do. Otherwise, um, we will probably have to continue work on um, inferring data from um, other uh, data files. So that's it for this particular video. Uh, in the next one, we'll continue with files about writing. All right. <laughs>